Well, hello there, everyone. Look who it is. Good day, everybody. Good to be here. I had the day off and Kim asked, hey, can you come on to the live stream this morning? So I'm just down here reading the book and just hanging out. So it's really cool to be here and see everyone. Uh, I've been super busy at work with a big, big project going on there and I'm not always able to make it. So uh, it's really nice to be able to be here today and uh, just say hi to everyone and not have to you know worry about how much longer i have on my lunch and that kind of thing but really good to see everyone um and actually you know this just kind of reminds me of all of you out there who are pulling these channels by yourselves you're doing your own filming you're doing your own editing and you're doing all of this by yourself i just really want to commend you all i tip my hat to you all uh, that's an incredible amount of work and i think we're just really lucky that we're able to work together but it's good to see everybody here. Keep it going. Uh, all of you that are just pulling uh, so many hours doing other things and running your channels at the same time, or even just your gardens and stuff. So uh, thank you all again for being here today and keep up the good work you're doing yourselves. Hey everyone, let me see. Man, the, uh, the chat is just going by. I can't even keep up with everyone. Uh, it's a beautiful day here though. Hello, Virginia. Oh snap, it's camera guy. Yes, that's a good thing though, I think, right? Oh snap. And uh, Kim, you wanna come on uh, come on out now and sure. say hi to everyone? Hey uh, everyone. Yes, this is really cool. Hey Natalie. Great to see everybody hi. on here and today. Cliff, hey Cliff, good to see everyone. Cliff, wow, <laughs> Cliff is going crazy. I saw in the chat earlier, he planted 32 tomato plants today already, <laughs> or tomato seeds, Yes. either one. So even in cold Idaho, Cliff is going strong with gardening. <laughs> I know a lot of you might be off work for President's Day. Thank you for, for spending some time with us here. It's really nice to have uh, Camera Guy on the chat. And for those of you that are new to our live streams, Camera Guy's my husband, his name is Jerry, and he films and edits our videos. And I wanna welcome anyone who's new. And uh, we live stream every Monday, his, his beautiful camera there. We live stream every Monday at noon Pacific time. We love to share resources, tips, tricks, and just share in the garden community here. A lot of wonderful gardeners here in the chat. So today we're gonna to talk about some common seed starting problems and how to fix them. So we'll get going on that in just a second, but I wanna say hello to people in the chat. Uh, Mr. Backyard, Mr. My Backyard Gord saying happy President's Day. That's right, happy President's Day to our US friends. I saw someone from Beirut. Oh my goodness, from That's Beirut. Cool. That yeah, is good to have so you. cool, yeah, welcome. Right Sharon Vargas, hello, Vegas, sorry. Just planted an elephant garlic. Those are amazing. I mean, I know you're absolutely gonna love it. Crazy Gardener Collins, great to see you both today. Thank you so much. I saw Rod's name flash, flash by as well. Oh, how fun. Rod is watching from Hi, Baja. Sandra. The work does not stop. Yeah, I hear no you. Kidding. Always something to be done, right? Yes. Ran, hi Ran, I, Bob in the, the frozen north here. The snow is slowly melting, you two. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> hope it melts soon and I hope you're enjoying the warmth that we're able to bring you here from California and hope it brings some sunshine and, and blessings um, to your day whenever you watch our videos. Hello from Dublin, Ireland. That was oh, Sean. Cool. Wow, Very cool. that's cool. Wow. Darlene from Northeast Oregon. It's so weird to be on this side. I'm usually just doing the chat. This is cool. Yeah, I love having him here. It's awesome. It's so fun. I hope you guys enjoy it too. Um, let's see, Rod, how are you? How do I fix sowing too many seeds? We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Hello from Montreal, Canada. Angela from Baltimore. Hi, Angela. How are you? Wow, so many people from all over the world. What a great time. Well, Can yeah, I first? wanted to say just a little <laughs> bit of background uh, since I'm here today. Might as well share this with you. But That's I'm right. hoping that you all watched uh, yesterday's video, uh, episode three of the Spring Garden series. And just a couple of details behind that video. Correct me where I, I'm a little bit off here. But it took three hours to shoot, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Three hours to edit. And then on top of all of that, and these aren't complaints, these are just kind of interesting things I think you guys might enjoy. Um, but on top of all that, I think we had a, a total of a, maybe of a 40 minute episode. And we just kind of had to go through that and trim down, you know, what really didn't need to be in there and, uh, you know, dead spots while there's just kind of work going on and things. So um, that was really fun. And I was having problems with the camera yesterday. So that added a little bit of, an, of a challenge for me. My, my camera was uh, just low and kind of getting inverted. So I was kind of crooked a couple of times. And, but uh, Joel is an absolutely wonderful guy, you guys. He is as uh, snuggly as he is on camera. He, he just <laughs> yeah. 
is just such a caring guy. He's a big teddy bear. He's he so is, sweet. That's it, it. That's what it uh -huh. is. Big teddy bear. And I love how he just kind of goes, yeah, I kind of killed a lot of plants. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you fit right in. So anyway, yeah. some background there on the, uh, on the episode yesterday I thought you might enjoy. Yes, absolutely. It's fun to hear that background. <laughs> and in case you guys missed it, you got to go over and watch it. It's How to Start Seeds Indoors. We're filming with a good friend of ours. His name is Joel, and he has graciously agreed to help us out on the Spring Garden series. So it's really a lot of fun, and we had an absolute ball filming with him yesterday. We had lots of things to deal with. We had some noise yeah, issues, did. too. Oh, we had all kinds of noise going on. <laughs> so funny. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, they were, they were painting next door oh, yeah. with uh, an air compressor, so we had to kind of stop and wait for that. Yeah. And then uh, it, it was just all kinds of, yeah, we're lots under, of planes we're, flying overhead. We're and, under a flight <laughs> pattern as well, San Francisco to Burbank. And then... Um, Hold on just a second. We had something just scroll. Sorry, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Um, super chat from Nicole. Oh, my Aww. goodness. Nicole is so sweet. <laughs> Uh, 2 dollars 99 you, and Nicole says, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all your help. Wow, Nicole, we appreciate you showing up here week after week and all your support just means the, the world to us. So thank you. And one more thing I want to say, mm. hi from Babylon, from M. I don't think we've ever had anyone from Babylon, Babylon. on here today. That's pretty exciting. I don't even know where that is. Somewhere in the Middle East, I think. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, sorry, go ahead, Jerry. I know oh, you're talking no, about planes, flight patterns. It's great and... to see everybody here, and thank you again, Nicole. So yeah, we had planes. We had the small private planes. You know, it's a practice area above where we live. So just all kinds of noise and yeah. uh, things like that. So it was good fun, all, all in good uh, challenges to, to bring the videos to y'all. Right, it was so much fun. And I see Rory on here at Hi, Rory. New 99. Hi, Rory. The Dominguez family here from Gilroy. That is so awesome. All here with you. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, the whole fam. That's so cool. We got to meet them up in uh, the Mandarin Festival. Great to have you guys on with us today. Thank you so much for spending your day off with us. Uh, Let's jump in and talk about some of um, common seed starting problems. And then I'm going to mention uh, one problem, how to fix it. We'll jump into the chat for questions. So get your questions ready on any issues you've had starting seeds indoors. And we're going to troubleshoot them and try and take care of some of them today. And hopefully get you guys well on your way to successful seed starting indoors for your spring garden. So the first common problem that a lot of people deal with, and I hear this time and time again, is leggy seedlings. So raise your hand in the chat here or give me a yes, I've had this problem if you have experienced leggy seedlings. Now in case you don't know what leggy is, Jerry, have you had that problem with no. leggy seedlings? Mm -hmm. I actually have some leggy seedlings right here guys I wanted to show you. So I have the same problem you do if I'm, you know, not doing what the little fix is here. So these are some lettuce seedlings and they don't look too bad but you can see how they're kind of flopping over. They're not nice and um, strong and stocky like I would prefer. And uh, there's a couple causes of leggy seedlings. I know um, basically, the reason. What's that? Uh, the light is too high above, so they try to stretch up to the light, and that's how they get leggy. Very good, Jerry. Nice. Osmosis. Yeah, very good. So, yeah, they just get kind of thin um, stems there, and they're not nice and strong and stocky and standing up straight and tall like they should be. So not being too close to the light is definitely one issue. You want to, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, uh, Jack, you guilty of that? Yeah, I hear you. Avenue 99, same thing. She goes, yep, all the time. A lot of people have that problem. So um, you want to have your light um, no more than two to three inches right above your seedling. And that really does help with the legginess problem. Um, when they have to stretch for the light, they, they're a stem stretch and they just tend to not be super strong. So one issue is the light. So you can definitely fix that by making sure that your light is only two to three inches away from your um, little seed start. The other issue though, and this is the case with these, is planting too many seeds or um, it getting too hot. So the main issue here actually is it getting too hot. I actually have these in a grow light box and it just got a little bit too toasty in there and the seedlings started to get a little bit leggy. So I have removed them from the grow light box. Lettuce is a cool weather vegetable, so it doesn't like temperatures over 75, 80 degrees. And once I stuck them um, outside of the grow light box, um, they're not gonna change their legginess, but it'll definitely help them um, grow a little bit stronger from this point forward. So from now on, I'm not putting my lettuce seed, seedlings in the grow light box. I'm gonna put them outside so they get more airflow, and that will make my next little batch um, a lot stronger. Tons of people are commenting saying, yep, I'm, um, the legginess is an issue here and you know, that whole thing. So yeah, it sounds like a common thing. Yeah, definitely a big issue. So um, now 
how you can fix this is you can always plant your leggy seedlings a little bit deeper once you plant them in a container or in your garden bed and that way the soil kind of supports the the legginess and they'll grow nice and strong for the most part after that but again guys you know i always say start back up so start a new batch <laughs> and that way if your leggy seedlings don't make it you'll have a new batch to take its place mm -hmm. so let's head into the chat answer some questions about leggy seedlings or other seed starting problems I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one that grows uh, seedlings that are leggy um, now and then. Okay, question from My Backyard Gourds. How are you doing today? My uh, question is, I picked up some seeds that say start early. How early is early? <laughs> Example, hollyhocks. Uh, my last frost date is May 18th. Okay, I've actually never grown hollyhocks, but usually what they say when they mean start early is that those are the earliest vegetables you can start in the spring. Um, some of those vegetables are frost tolerant. For example, peas are an early spring vegetable. So you don't even have to wait for your last frost date to be passed. As soon as you can kind of work the soil, um, you can pop those pea seeds in there. So you might want to kind of Google a specific flower or vegetable that you're um, going to be starting and see what the rec or look on the back of the seed packet and see what the recommended um, start time is. If it says wait till after frost, then just plant it after frost. Tomatoes, for example, are not an early vegetable. You want to wait till the soil warms up even a few weeks after your frost date or provide them with some extra cover so they have the warmth they need to um, really um, you know, not get damaged by the cold weather. You know, here's a good comment too you may want to address. This is Catherine Little Bear says, my daughter and I are starting seeds indoors in Washington State, but we don't have grow lights. Okay, so if you don't have grow lights, Catherine Little Bear, um, first of all, you definitely want to pick the sunniest uh, window in your house. But I would highly recommend if you have 10 or $15 to spare to um, even just hook up a small little clamp light, um, little uh, like I showed on the grow light video a few weeks ago. Those are very inexpensive. They work really well with a small amount of um, of plant starts and a lot of times um, the sunny window just doesn't provide enough direct overhead light to get your seedlings off to a great start without experiencing that legginess issue that we just talked about. So highly recommend just if you can set the money aside pick up one of those those clamp lights and then get yourself the sunniest window you can if you if you can't um, fit that in your budget for that at this time. But still go for it right? I mean, if you just yeah. can't get one, still go for it. You're just, you might run into legginess as an issue then kind of a thing. Yeah, definitely go for it. I mean, yeah. starting in a sunny window is definitely better than not starting at exactly. all. So definitely um, give that a go. Crazy Gardener Collins, yes, it, it does, a sunny window does often produce leggy seedlings. It's not the best way, but it's better than nothing. So I'd much rather have people start with that than not grow at all. So can definitely- Can you still eat them? Yeah, you can still eat them, absolutely. There you go. boom. Absolutely, it might not be the strongest plant in the world, but you can eat it and experiment and see what works best for you. That's why I always say, just get started, no matter what you do. Good okay, one. let's see here. Uh, question, uh, my soil is getting whiter on the top. I started my seeds, this is from Irma. Hi Irma, I started my seed in a Jiffy greenhouse about two weeks ago. Okay Irma, that is a great question. I was actually gonna mention that if we had time at the end of the live stream. So probably what's happening is you're starting to develop some mold on the top of your soil there in the pellet. So pretty common indoor growing problem. Um, I don't like to use those little covers that come with the Jiffy greenhouses or cover my seedlings at or my little pellets at all because I feel like it just produces too much humidity, which will help the mold um, to grow and, and, all, and you know, all that much more. So I like to provide some airflow with a little fan or just don't keep it covered. Um, you can scrape that off with a knife and um, you can also kind of sprinkle uh, cinnamon on the top of the soil to kind of help with that. But don't make, just be careful that you're not overwatering. That can also be a cause of mold. Okay, more airflow. Yes, Crazy Gardener Collins. Good suggestion with that. Um, okay, so let's jump back and talk about our second tip. How are we doing back there, Jerry, with the umbrella? Well, it looks like it's <laughs> getting a little bright. I'll see what I can okay. do. Okay, our, uh, our umbrella's kind of blowing around in the All wind right. back there, so Jerry might have to pop back and fix that. Um, let's see here, second problem, and I again, I wanna hear from you guys if you've had this issue with your indoor seedlings. Second com common problem is something called damping off. 
So if you're not familiar with damping off, uh, maybe you've had it and you don't even realize it, have you ever noticed sometimes with your tiny little seedlings, it looks like something has just pinched the stem uh, closest to the soil. Let me grab a seedling here. Uh, I don't have any with damping off right now, and actually these are these are not seedlings, those are, these are growing into plants. But when, this, when the little tiny seedling first germinates, there's gonna be a little stem that comes out of the soil. Sometimes it will all of a sudden just kind of keel right over and it will die. And it happens very, very suddenly, sometimes overnight, the night before it looks fine, the next day you're like, what in the heck happened to my teeny tiny seedling that just germinated? That's called damping off. Yes, absolutely. A lot of you have had um, that happen. I see Stephanie has. Um, other people are mentioning that they have had that happen. Um, that is just basically a fungal disease and very commonly caused when you're overwatering or when you don't have enough airflow. Unfortunately, there's nothing that you can do once your seeds have dampened off there's nothing you can do to recover them. So the best way to fix this problem is to prevent it. So the best way to prevent it is make sure that you're not overwatering your plants. Um, you want your soil, like we talked about yesterday, to be moist but not soggy. So you don't wanna leave your little pellets or your cups with soil sitting in water for too long. Um, with uh, the seedlings, you wanna just, before they've germinated, you just wanna spray the tops of the soil, just like we showed yesterday in the video. You do not want to soak them, because that's one of the most common issues that causes damping off, is soil that's too wet. Another thing is, provide some good airflow, um, put a little fan up, maybe hook it up to a timer, or run it you know, a few hours a day, then turn it off, just to get that air circulating, to make sure that your soil is, is drying out just a little bit in between waterings. Um, the other thing you can do is provide a really good environment um, for your seedlings to grow. Like with your warm weather vegetables, make sure they're on a heat mat so they're growing fast and uh, get past that seedling stage very quickly because damping off only affects seedlings when they first emerge from the soil. Once they're this size here, they're nice and healthy, they're past the tiny seedling stage, you're not gonna have that issue. So provide it with the good environment, the good moisture, the right temperature, and um, a good airflow, and most likely you're not gonna have a damping off issue. And of course, always start um, a, couple of, a couple of different batches, so if something happens to one, you'll have some backups. So hopefully that'll help you guys avoid that very common issue that happens to a lot of us gardeners when we're first starting seeds indoors. Let me head into the chat now and answer some of your questions. Let's see if anyone else has had that issue. And Christy's posting in the chat here. Hi, Christy, sorry I didn't acknowledge her. Everything mm -hmm. Sunflowers and More is our moderator today. She's here every week and does a wonderful job. Does a great job. Thank you so much. And she's posting um, a link for the easy grow light setup video. Super easy to get grow lights set up and that will give your seedlings also the, the light that they need to avoid legginess and to be nice and healthy. So let's see what questions we have. Flying by. Hi, Baghdad. While Kim's looking for the next question. Good to have you here, Baghdad. Thanks for checking in and saying hi. Yeah, great to have you here. Really cool how everyone's just helping each other as as the discussion goes on. It's it's hard to follow. It's really neat. It is cool. The chat's Re flying really by. Uh, yeah, and that's one great thing about this community is a lot of people are not just me answering questions, but a lot of you all are answering questions and helping people off too. And there's just something about knowing that you're not the only one that has dealt with an issue. That is just a really good feeling. Not that we want anyone to have those problems, but it just helps us feel like we're one big happy community here. Well, Kim keeps looking for a question. Um, someone asked about hydroponics and the, okay. an the answer is, is no, we never tried that. No reason, um, nothing good or bad about it. Just we wanted to stay with the gardening here in the backyard and actually uh, growing in soil. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to try at some point in time, but just haven't got there yet. Okay, um, Stephanie, I just popped in another couple of seeds into the same containers that dampened off. Oh, this is a great question. Should it be okay? Uh, Stephanie, I would actually start over with some brand new soil. Um, most likely that soil does have some type of fungus in it since it had the damping off issue. So start over with brand new soil, make sure it's a good um, seed starting or indoor potting mix that's nice and fine, light and fluffy, and you shouldn't have any um, other issues. Well, that was so cool. Give that a try. I'm sorry, we just got a, um, what are they called? Oh, the super chat. The super chat. From Richard. <laughs> hey, Richard. Richard. Thanks, man. How you doing? Thank you. What a nice note too. Appreciate Very nice. it. Very nice. Love it. Awesome. Thanks. Great, thank you for joining us here today. Really appreciate the support. 
Okay, Shirley has a great tip. I brought a small fan from Bed Bath & Beyond. It's mm -hmm. about eight inches. I love those small little fans. I love Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, me too. I actually think they might be going out of business though. I think so, but yeah, they're unfortunately, just a fun, <laughs> fun story just to walk through. They are fun. Um, I hung it above the seedlings. That's helping with the airflow. Great tip, Shirley. Hmm. And uh, yeah, that will really definitely help. Okay, Great idea. KY Faith Haven Farm. Hi, how are you? Welcome. I've never seed started indoors before. I want the two this year because I have different kinds of tomatoes and peppers I want to try. I've always used transplants. And yeah, starting seeds indoors is really gives you that wide variety and I really think you're gonna love it. Um, there is just so many more different kinds of vegetables you can start when you pick up some seed packets and start your own indoors. Plus you're gonna save a ton of money. I think you're really gonna love it. Thanks again, Richard. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's see. What is a good soil to use for starting seed? This is from Andrea Donnell. Okay, Andrea, my favorite soil to use for everything is good dirt soil. And the great thing about it is they are now in Target. So it's very accessible to everyone. You can grab a bag at your local Target. On yesterday's video and in actually all of my planting um, indoors, I use the indoor or the good dirt indoor potting mix. It's really nice and fluffy and it really does help the seeds germinate quickly. So hopefully, I know it's sold very fast at Target. So a lot of times it's out of stock. You can pick it up on their website too, but check your local Target first and that way you um, can save on shipping. So love good dirt. Susanna um, has a really funny uh, post here. She says, my dog thinks he's a cat, left him on the porch, sleep overnight, crawls into the raised bed and smashes all the seedlings. Oh no. So uh, kind of interesting <laughs> is that we noticed that Joel actually made something to address that issue. And I think maybe Kim, we can squeeze that in somehow. Joel oh, yeah. made it himself. It, it's literally just a cage that just opens and closes over the top with wire chicken mesh, I think. Yeah, it's basically. With chicken wire and PVC chicken pipe. Wire. Yep. So it's very a simple little structure that he used to protect his uh, containers from his dogs. Yeah, I think we're pretty lucky. That's never been an issue with Mac but um, a lot of people do ask about how do you keep the dogs out? And, you know, we've seen people um, put forks upside down, you know, so the forks are pointing up and that <laughs> seems to deter them as well. So uh, yeah, ongoing issue. If anyone has any thoughts on that, feel free to add them down in the comments, but l let's show them if we can, um, Joel's thing. Yeah, That'd we definitely cool. will. I think a lot of people have the issue with pets. Um, and we did, uh, the grow light box is really helpful for that in the house. So if you have small children, you don't want getting into your plants or your pets, your cats, your dogs, whatever, um, check out the grow light video because you can build one and it keeps it contained and away from your pets. So I want to let you guys know about something I just did on my website that's gonna help you get your seed started and save a little bit of money. I just bundled together the Spring Garden series, I know, or Spring Garden seed collection. I know a lot of you wanna start from seed this year. I bundled together with my book um, organic gardening for everyone. So you can pick this up and save yourself $5. Now it helps because you're, if you purchase them separately, it's gonna cost you $5 more. So we bundled them together. As my way of saying thanks with a $5 discount, you can find it under my shop tab and then go to the seed collections tab. And then you're gonna find a picture of it all in one little bundle. So grab this if you wanna get started, save yourself five bucks and then grow along with us with the Spring Garden series. We're gonna have so much fun. We are really looking forward to filming with Joel. And like Jerry said at the beginning, he is just a really fun guy. We're going to be building a very simple raised bed with him, setting up containers, installing drip irrigation, and talking about watering, fertilizing, everything you need to know to get your spring garden off to a great start and be successful and grow yourself a lot of veggies. So it's really gonna be a fun series and we're really looking forward to it with him. You know, Sharon out in New York asks, she goes, how do, how do I grow all that in New York City? And I think she's referring to maybe not having a lot of space. And I just want to encourage you, just find out how much space you have and just do one container, one small little container. Listen to me, I sound like I do this all the time, but I just, <laughs> I learned it from filming Kim. <laughs> but Kim also has just these little containers all over the house and she has one container growing and just grow in that and start start that way. Absolutely, I know you're very space limited in New York City. So start simple. In fact, I'm gonna show them, Jerry, right behind you. Hope that helps, Sharon. Yeah, Sharon, go for it. Um, right behind you, I'm gonna pull this over, Jerry. Behind. This is um, the little container. You can grow this little tiny dwarf tomato in here. 
have these on my website. You can also grow a little container of lettuce. So that way you can get a little salad going, maybe a, little, a few little tomatoes to pop on top of your salad. And there is a lot that you can grow in a small amount of space. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a really fun little container. Um, but go back and watch our small space container garden series that we filmed a couple years back. Has lots of tips for growing in a small space. We're also going to be filming a brand new one in April, so stay tuned for that. And pretty much all you need is a little spot in the sun to put a few containers and you are good to go. So don't give up on it. You absolutely can do it. Bye, Delia. I think I said your name right. You said you have to go back to work. Trust me, I get that. That's why I'm here today, because I'm off. So go back to work, do the right thing, and we'll see you on the next chat. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, so let me cover the last um, problem, common seed starting problem, and then we'll get to as many questions as we can Ooh. before the end of the live stream, okay? So the last problem that a lot of people might experience is poor germination. Now, if you're not sure what germination means, it just means that moment when the seeds bust through the soil. So that's something that all of us gardeners anxiously and excitedly watch for every single time we plant seeds. So I know you guys are like me. I'm always watching for that. I'm going to grab something right over here that we just did yesterday with Joel. She's grabbing another tub of starts. <laughs> always got a few things going here. Oh, and, wait, Alexis. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Can you read that, Jerry? Yeah. Uh, Alexis says, uh, $10 super chat. Oh, shoot, what do I do? Just scroll down. Whoop. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. That's all right. Okay. Scroll down there. Um, she says, last season, my garden was 90% started from your seeds. The worm wow. tea and worm castings made this the most successful year ever that is fabulous uh best year she's ever had as an amateur of 30 years right wow, on what Alexis. a rocking story that is Love awesome that. thank yep. you so much for sharing that always encourages us to just keep on going yep. and i am so happy for you it's such a good feeling knowing that you're good learning job. and you're doing it yourself that's just awesome so um here guys i started these yesterday with joel if you watched the video you saw us do this and I've already been checking on these a couple of times. I know they're not going to germinate overnight, but um, it's always exciting when you see them bust through the soil. Thank you, Vanna White. <laughs> and, but if you're having problems with poor germination, a couple of things to look for. If you watched the video yesterday, you, you noticed me talking about some tips for success. And one of those was temperature. And a lot of times um, you might be growing some warm weather vegetables like these are. These are peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers and squash and you might you might have them in a spot that's too cold for them like maybe you have them on a shelf in your garage with your grow lights um, they like to germinate in temperatures of 60 to 70 degrees so I like to keep them in a warm spot in my house a lot of people might put them on top of the refrigerator a super easy thing to do is to use a heat mat they're relatively inexpensive um, there's a, there'll be a link in the video description to a heat mat you can pick up peppers especially need a bottom heat um, to help them germinate quickly. So a lot of times they just won't germinate unless they have that bottom heat. But all of my warm weather vegetables here can definitely benefit from a little bit of heat underneath. It'll help them grow that much faster. So the same applies to cold weather vegetables. If they're growing in a spot that's too hot because they like to germinate in cooler temperatures like 45 to 70 degrees, then they're not gonna germinate either. So look at the type of vegetable you're growing and then um, adjust the, the temperature accordingly. So maybe keep your cooler vegetables um, in a cooler spot in your house, not in a bright, warm, sunny window where they're gonna get too much heat and adjust your temperatures accordingly. So um, that is one thing that will definitely help speed germination. So Reed is asking how long to leave the grow light on you need to watch yesterday's <laughs> video because we answer that question to the video. So see what you can find there, but I'll tell you the answer is in there. That's right, absolutely. The exact, exact time links, you should have it on and off. The exact time links are in there, and I know Rita also has my book, and the exact time links are also in, in there. So little pop quiz here, if anybody can answer from yesterday's video, the Grow Light video, or from my book, how long to leave your seedlings on. So let me, let me know, guys, here in the chat. Little, little pop quiz. Oh, there Luz. we go. Luz is right on it. 18 hours on. Way to go, Luz. Uh, she got the prize right And Reed, there. we're giving you a hard time, so it's all good. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the <laughs> other... <laughs> everybody's got it. You guys uh, are, are quick hilarious. learners there. Way to go. Uh, what a hoot. Now, the other thing that can um, be a cause of slow germination or poor germination 
Um, Stephanie, I thought it was 16. Okay, you know what, guys? Here's, here's one of these things, too, where gardening is not an exact science. My preference is 18 hours on, six hours off, but you know what? It also depends on the type of grow lights you're using. So just experiment again. Your seedlings are not gonna die if you only leave them on for 16 hours a day. That would be what, eight hours a day off? I don't know, I can't do <laughs> I math think fast. something like that. Um, just keep an eye on your seedlings and make adjustments as you as you go. You definitely like eight hours a day on is not enough. So just make sure you're up there in the high teens and then make an adjustment um, as you go along. So experiment and see what works best for you. 18 hours, way to go, Sharon. Yeah, you got that. Okay, um, let's see, I lost my train of thought there. Oh yes, I was talking about <laughs> planting depth. Um, another reason for poor germination could be you're planting your seeds too deep. So a general rule of thumb is plant your seeds about twice as deep of the width of your seed. Again, not an exact science, but if you plant a tomato seed, a teeny tiny tomato seed, two or three inches deep, that's gonna be way too deep for that seed and it's gonna take forever to germinate, if it even germinates at all. So you wanna just press tiny seeds down into the soil a little bit. The squash and cucumber seeds though, you can plant because they're you know, maybe a half an inch or a quarter of an inch um, big, you can plant them um, an inch or two deep. So just kind of gauge it to that and that will help speed up your germination and help you be a lot more successful with germinating seeds. So those are the three tips I had for you today, guys, how to fix some common seed starting problems. So let me hear in the chat here, we've got a few minutes left, what kind of questions um, you might have. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to mention, I always get this question. Oh. Where do I get the peat pellets? Where do I get the supplies that you show in the videos? Mm. I always link everything up in the video descriptions. I wanna make it easy for you guys to be successful. I don't want you purchasing products that don't work. So everything I use works. I've tried them, most of them I've used for years. So there's Amazon links in every single video description where I show supplies. So always check the video description for video links, supply links seed and book links, all kinds of ways that you guys can save money and be successful with your um, growing your vegetables. So while you look for a question, I'll say uh, Rebecca posted that she got our book last night in the mail. Oh, cool. So right on, congratulations and thank you. Yes. And uh, we really hope that you enjoy it. The small garden series that we're doing right now follows that book exactly. So it's great to have it in your hand. You can just sit and read it and, and that type of thing and then watch the video as well. So thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Rebecca. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, uh, Stephen Hunt. Are you growing any, ra oh no, that was, let's see, where's Stephen Hunt? Okay, I'll get to the raspberries or blackberries in just a moment. Um, where's Stephen Hunt? Oh yeah, should I start cantaloupe and pumpkin indoors since I'm in Canada with a short season? Absolutely, when you're in a short season, you definitely wanna start everything you can indoors. However, Stephen, don't start them too soon because the cantaloupe, and the squash and the melons grow very fast. So I would start them, I'd say three weeks, maybe four weeks before your last frost date. Um, you could even start them a little bit sooner than that as long as you have a way to transplant them into larger containers and to give them enough light. You wanna have nice strong transplants to pop in the garden uh, probably a week or two after your last frost date, when your soil starts to warm up, you wanna have nice transplants ready to go so that you can get a harvest, you have enough time in your growing season to get a harvest before your first frost date hits, which I know is really early for you there in Canada. Uh, let's see, someone just asked about planting um, blackberries and strawberries. Okay, yeah, I do have some blackberries growing. I don't have a lot of videos on those. I do have lots of videos on growing strawberries. So hopefully we can do some more videos on blackberries as the season approaches. I have do have some wonderful harvest videos though. Remember we did a lot oh, of yeah. harvest last year on our yep. blackberries? Those are fun. Yeah, those are really fun. So check our harvest video playlist um, for some of those. And Rebecca says she's already enjoyed the book that she started, so that's fabulous. Good to hear. I that's, enjoy it too. Great. It's an easy read. Good, that is an easy read. Um, Sharon Lilly is loving the book too. Wonderful. Oh, nice. That's great. I love hearing the feedback. It's yeah. really rewarding when you work on something so hard to see people really enjoying it. So it really helps motivate us and encourage us to just keep on going. Okay, what to do with gnats from TY777. 
Okay, I actually might have had this question written down um, to answer today. Fungus gnats are, are also a common problem with indoor growing. And the best thing you can do is prevent the problem before it even happens. A lot of people have issues once they get infestations, getting rid of those tiny little gnats that are pesky that fly around inside. Um, so what you can do is as you're planting your seeds, sprinkle the top of the soil with some cinnamon before your seeds germinate. It's the easiest way to, um, to sprinkle the cinnamon on there without getting your, your uh, leaves of your plants covered in cinnamon. Just sprinkle it over the top of the soil. It has antibacterial properties and will help with the fungus gnats. That's number one. Number two, um, put little bottle caps with apple cider vinegar, a little drop of dish soap in there that attracts the fungus gnats that might be flying around and then that'll help cut down on, on them flying around. The third thing is, is you can spray neem oil over your soil, inside your containers, and the neem oil really helps with the chewing and sucking insects. So a three-pronged approach is always good and hopefully that'll help get rid of some of those fungus gnats because they really are pesky and they can really affect the healthier plants. While you look for the next question, uh, Travis was asking us about drip irrigation. Do we sell anything? And Rita replied and she said she uses DIG. That's what we use as well. We've mm -hmm. got videos on it in our playlist. Um, so we use DIG uh, drip irrigation and uh, then we use some spaghetti lines off of that into the planters and stuff. But the most important thing is we did put a timer on it so it happens automatically okay. because we all get busy and we forget to turn things off or turn them on sometimes. So I hope that helps, but check our playlist for sure. Definitely. And there is a link um, in this video once it uploads to YouTube on um, the drip irrigation kit that we use pretty much all over our garden, which is a great way to get started because it has everything included in it. And I know they also have those supplies at Home Depot. So check your local Home Depot or pick it up on Amazon from our link there. Okay, here's a question from uh, Marsha. Hi guys, my starts are now growing. They have new leaves and it looks like they're not growing anymore. What's my problem? Okay, Marsha, you are definitely gonna wanna tune in to next week's video that we're gonna be filming this coming weekend. It's gonna be all about watering and fertilizing. I'm gonna go over, um, you definitely probably need to fertilize your seedlings. After it passes, once it starts to get those true leaves on it, you need to give them a little dose of some uh, water-soluble fertilizer just to give them that oomph to help them keep growing. Um, my seedlings here, get a little dose of fertilizer about once a week and they are nice and strong and healthy and that's what keeps them strong and healthy. So turn in, tune in to next week's video, but in the meantime, I like to use um, Vermisteria worm tea and the Good Dirt plant food. I do it at half to quarter strength and, do, and water with it about once a week um, to help keep my seedlings nice and strong. So I'm sure that will definitely help. What are you laughing at? Oh, you got me with the plant. Oh, that's sorry. Okay. Part of the job. Okay, um, we're gonna take maybe one or two more questions and then sign off for the day here. Let's see, Angela's Garden Scents. How old are those seedlings? These were started on 119, 2020. So they are gonna be one month old on Wednesday. So these are absolutely beautiful. They've been under grow lights, 18 hours on, six hours off. Fertilized once a week. Jerry's getting bonked with the <laughs> seedlings here. But um, guys, that's one reason why I love to help you out here with um, the step-by-steps -step that I'm doing because I really want you guys to have seedlings that are this healthy. So make sure you follow all the steps and you can get seedlings that look like this too. And you're gonna have some beautiful vegetables in your garden. It's so much fun. You know, I would just wanna add real quick that everyone sees Kim's stuff and they're like, oh my gosh, it's, my mind will never be like Kim's. Mine never... Well, you have to experiment a little bit. You have to do what works for good for you in your environment and your setting. You know, Kim may say 18 hours, well, try 17 or try 16, it's okay. You're gonna find your own little groove there about what works well for you uh, in your setting. Absolutely, and if, if, if you have a few plants that die, that's okay. We can always start more and then you can fix the issues the next time around. <laughs> okay, yes, I, I see the question about um, nasturtiums from Coupon Lover 93 Hi there, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Can I direct seed nasturtiums? I'm in North Carolina where the nights are 40s and the days are in the 60s. 
Nasturtiums actually do best, coupon lover, we've got some right behind us here, when you direct seed them right in the garden. They don't transplant well. So yes, I highly encourage you to, to plant nasturtiums. They are not frost tolerant. So wait until all the danger of frost is gone in your area. Check your last frost date on um, thefarmersalmanac.com. I'll put a link in the video description for that. Um, and then plant them after your last frost date and they are absolutely beautiful, cool weather flowers. They do best in temperatures under 80 degrees. So once it gets super hot here, they do kind of tend to fry a little bit. So make sure you plant them very first thing in the spring and you are absolutely gonna love them. You can eat them too, which is really fun. The leaves and the flowers are completely edible and they're really, really tasty. Oh, thank you, Christy. She got the frostate calculator in there, appreciate that. Rebecca was saying that they don't sell dig in her area. I thought, um, or drip, I thought Dig, you could order off their website too. Um, Couldn't you? You know what? Check, check it I'm out. Not sure. Dig Corporation, I believe, is what they are. They're out of San Diego. But, but you, give that a look. Yeah, you can definitely order on Amazon as well. So check um, our Amazon link if you, if you can't find it in your area. And if you don't know what to get, look at our playlist and look at our drip irrigation one. And we, I think we use one called the, the 50 piece kit. Don't let that intimidate you. But it's just, that's the yeah. kit we use for a good starting one. It's called a raised bed irrigation kit, Thanks, but you Sharon. can also use it in containers. It's the same kit we use for our containers and for our raised beds. And the great thing about it is if you can extend it and add on to it, if you end up adding extra containers or more raised beds, you can definitely um, add on to it as you go. But it's a great starter kit to go with. Yes. Okay, Rod, thank you so hey, much. Rod. You guys helped me get to where I'm at with your wise words. Experiment and find what works for me. That's awesome, Rod. I've so We've so enjoyed your friendship and growing along with you over the years, and I'm mm -hmm. so glad that you're on here today. It's great to see you. Okay, we are going to go wave, ahead like... and <laughs> sign off for today, you guys. Yes, Again, good times. thanks for spending part of your day with us. We really appreciate it. And we do live stream every Monday here at noon Pacific time. And we will be posting video this coming Saturday or Sunday, so keep an eye out for that. We gotta have yeah, Mac. Get Mac in here. Let's get Mac in here to say hello. <laughs> he's he's enjoying uh, being outside with us here today. It's Definitely enjoying Jerry being home. Jerry is the alpha around the house. Mac listens a lot yeah. more to him than he does to me, so I'm just uh, the one that gives him snacks. And uh, stuff, let's right? be real, Mac <laughs> goes where the food is. Well, yeah, he does that too. So <laughs> right. anyway, guys, hope you have a great rest of your day. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you that on next fun. week's live stream. Bye guys. Take care. Bye-bye.